Hello again. In this video, we will discuss law of gearing. There are different methods that can be used to transmit motion and power from one shaft to another. The simplest one is a pair of friction cylinders. If these two surfaces are rough surfaces and sufficient pressure is applied between these two cylinders, then motion of one cylinder will cause motion of another cylinder. The example you have seen is motion of a bicycle which is moving along a road. Here the wheel of the bicycle is the one cylinder and the road surface is another cylinder with infinite radius. Friction is also used for transmitting motion through belts and ropes etc. Suppose this friction wheel is driving wheel and if it is rotating in anti-clockwise direction then, then this driven wheel will move along clockwise direction. To analyze motion of these two cylinders, assume radius of this cylinder as R1 and angular velocity as omega 1 and angular velocity and radius of this big cylinder is R2 and omega 2. Now there is one contact point, there is a contact point between these two cylinders. The velocity of this con contact point is assumed to be V. Here there are two points, one point is on this cylinder and another point on this cylinder. Let these values be P and Q. Now velocity, if you assume this point P on this cylinder, then velocity will be given by from the formula R omega, omega R, omega 1 into R1. So velocity of P will be omega 1 into R1. Now velocity of Q will be omega 2 into R2. For the pure rolling, without slipping, the motion between these two, that means relative motion between these two must be 0. So these two, velocity of P and velocity of Q must be same. Then only you will get pure rolling motion without slipping. Therefore, V should be equal to omega 1 R1 is equal to omega 2 R2. From this relation, you can see omega 1 by omega 2 is equal to R2 divided by R1. Now, radius R1 and R2 are not changing with time. Therefore, omega 1 by omega 2 is a constant. This method is okay for transmitting low and medium power. But if you want to transmit more power, then this wheel will not act properly because at that time slipping between P and Q, slipping between these two cylinders will start occurring and in that case velocity of P and Q will, will not remain same and therefore omega 1 by omega 2 will not be a constant value. To get constant values or to transmit more power, we will provide projections on the periphery of both wheels. So in, in this periphery of these both wheels, we will provide projections. These projections are called teeth. So here you can see I have provided teeth on both the wheels. Now you can transmit more power compared to the previous one that is compared to the friction cylinder. Now when these teeth are provided, omega 1 by omega 2 may not remain constant. For any arbitrary shape of these teeth, omega 1 by omega 2 may not be a constant value. To get a constant angular velocity ratio that is omega 1 by omega 2, if you want omega 1 and omega 1 by omega 2 to be a constant, this must, be, this must follow some law. So this law is to get constant velocity ratio between two gears, teeth of gears should be so designed that common normal at the point of contact must always pass through a fixed point on the line of center. This fixed point is called pitch point. It is also the point of contact of pitch circle. I have drawn two rigid bodies. One is A which is rotating about this point and another one is B which is rotating about this point. Now this A is rotating in clockwise direction with angular velocity omega 1. Because of this motion, B will move in anti-clockwise direction with some another angular velocity omega 2. I have joined these two centers. This, this are the line of center. So I have drawn this line of center. Now at the contact point you can assume two points, one point on this wheel, uh, one point on this rigid body and another point on this rigid body. So name this as C and D. I have named this as C and D. Next I have drawn one common normal from this contact point. So this is the common normal line at contact point. Now velocity of C with respect to A will be perpendicular to AC 
and let this value is VC. Since it is rotating in clockwise direction, therefore direction of VC will be perpendicular to the AC in this direction, not in downward direction. Similarly, velocity of D on this rigid body will be perpendicular to BD, which is B is the center of rotation. So perpendicular to BD and it is rotating in anti-clockwise direction, therefore in this direction. So name this velocity as VD. Now draw one line which is perpendicular to this common normal from A. From A I have drawn one line which is perpendicular to this common normal. I have marked this point as E and let this angle is alpha. So this angle is alpha. Now angle between AC and A is alpha. Now this line, this is a common normal which is perpendicular to AE and this VC is perpendicular to AC. So these two perpendiculars will also have same angle alpha. So VC and this common normal will also make same angle alpha. Similarly, I have drawn a line from B on this common normal perpendicular line. So this is a perpendicular line from B on this common normal. I have marked this point as S. And let angle between BD and BF as beta. So this angle is beta. Now you can see that this BD, BD is perpendicular to BD and this BF is perpendicular to common normal. Therefore, angle between this common normal and BD will also have same value as beta. So this is beta. So two perpendicular lines will have same angle. Now component of BC along this common normal component of VC along this common normal, we can resolve this VC into two components along this common normal and along this common tangent. So I am resolving this VC on this common normal. This will be, since this angle is alpha, so this normal will be VC cos alpha. I have marked this, so this, I have drawn this perpendicular line here. So this is your common normal, this is the velocity VC cos alpha along this common normal. Similarly, component of VD along common normal would be Vd cos beta which is shown here, Vd cos beta, these are the two velocities, uh, component of velocities Vc and Vd along common normal. Now relative velocity between these two points P and D along common normal will be Vc cos alpha minus Vd cos beta. So this will be the relative velocity between these two points P and D which is equal to Vc cos alpha minus Vd cos beta. Now this value Vc cos alpha minus Vd cos beta that is relative velocity between these two points along common normal must be 0 because if it is not 0 then C will penetrate on this D that is if Vc cos alpha is greater than Vd cos beta then this C point will penetrate on this rigid body which is not possible or if Vd cos beta is greater than Vc cos alpha in that case the contact between these two points will break. To maintain contact between these two points, this velocity must be 0. So this is equal to 0. Now Vc is R from the formula R omega, V is equal to R omega. So you can see this AC is the R radius and omega is omega 1. So Vc can be written as omega 1 into AC. And cos alpha from this triangle you can see from AEC in this triangle, cos alpha is equal to AE divided by AC that is adjacent divided by hypotenuse. Now this is perpendicular, so this will be, this will be hypotenuse, this will be adjacent. So adjacent AE divided by AC will be cos alpha. Similarly, VD would be omega to BD, R omega from the formula R omega, BD into uh, omega 2 and cos beta will be from this triangle BFC, oh sorry, from BFB from this triangle you can see this Bf upon Bd, again adjacent divided by hypotenuse. So, this is your hypotenuse Bd and Bf is your adjacent. Now, in this you can simplify this equation, AC would be cancelled, so I have cancelled AC. So, you are getting omega 1 A minus omega 2 Bf is equal to 0. For angular velocity ratio, omega 1 by omega 2 is equal to Bf upon A. So this is your BF and this is your AE. Now you can see there are uh, two another. If you make, if you mark this point, that is we need this point. 
common normal intersection of this common normal with the line of center so this is line of center and this is common normal and intersection of these two i have marked this point as p once you have marked this point p you can see there are two triangles a p e and this is b p f and let me draw this so i have drawn this so this is this is p e a or a p e and this is b p f or p f b so these two triangles are similar triangles because these two angles are perpendicular angles 90 degrees these two are 90 degrees and these two angles are same their both side angle will also be same and uh, these two triangles are similar triangles so from this similar triangles from the similar triangles aep and bfp you can write bf upon ae this is bf bf upon ae is equal to bp upon ap so this is what i have written bp upon ap so you can write omega 1 by omega 2 is equal to bp upon ap now this bp upon ap must be constant if you want omega 1 by omega 2 to be constant so this bp divided by ap must be a constant value now from that in here you can see that this a and b are two centers of rotation these positions are fixed these are not changing with respect to time therefore if you want bp by ap to be constant this p must also be fixed point p cannot change or cannot uh, change its position along this line it must always be here only then only bp by ap must equal to constant so you can see that uh, to get if you want to get constant velocity ratio between two gear to gear these of gear should be so designed that common normal at the point of contact this common normal must always pass through a fixed point on the line of center so this is the line of center so it is always pass through a fixed point on line of center this fixed point is called pitch point we call this point as pitch point that's why i have named this as p uh, it is also the point of contact of pitch circle if you draw two pitch circles that is two circles with a at center and a p at radius similarly b at center and b p at radius these two are called pitch circles these are friction circles also these are the friction circles so if you draw two pitch circles then contact point will, will be your pitch point uh, so this is what law, law of gearing is now we have discussed law of gearing so in this uh, we will discuss velocity of sliding also that just now i have explained that there should not be any velocity any relative velocity between c and d along common normal but there must be that means there must be relative velocity between c and d along common tangent so i have drawn one common tangent here now you can resolve this vc and vp along this common tangent so component of vc along this common tangent is the this is cos this one was cos alpha so this one should be sin alpha so this is vc sin alpha so velocity of c vc well uh, component of vc along common tangent will be vc sin alpha and velocity and component of vd along common tangent will be vd sin beta so relative velocity along this common tangent that is velocity of sliding it is called velocity of sliding will be equal to vc sin alpha minus vd sin beta from the same way from those same same triangles vc is equal to omega 1 into ac but now this is a sin alpha so you have to take Uh, opposite divided by hypotenuse so opposite will be ec here this is in this triangle this is opposite and this is hypotenuse ec is hypotenuse and ec is uh, opposite so ec upon ec minus omega 2 into bd is the velocity vd and fd upon bd is sin beta so fd upon bd see this is fd and this is bd so opposite divided by hypotenuse simplify this so omega 1 into ec minus omega 2 into fd now ec can be written this is ec e to c this can be written as ep plus pc ep plus pc that, that is what i have written here ep plus pc similarly fd this fd can be written this is your fd f to d this can be written as sp minus dp so this is what i have written here sp minus dp when you multiply or simplify this you will get this term now in this term you can see that omega 1 by omega 2 is equal to bp by ap so this is what we have discussed in previous and just uh, just few minutes before we have discussed that omega 1 by omega 2 is equal to bp by ap 
from the same triangle, from this same two triangles APE and BPF, you can see that this ratio will also be equal to FP upon EP. So this is your FP upon EP. So B, from the same similar triangle, this other two sides I have taken FP upon EP. If you write like this, then that means omega 1 into EP is equal to omega 2 into FP. So you can see that here omega 1 EP is here and omega 2 FP is here. So these two values are same. Now one is plus and another one is minus. So these two will cancel, cancel out each other. So what you will get is omega 1 PC plus omega 2 DP. Now what is PC and DP? You can see that this is PC. This length is PC. And the same length is DP also. So this is DP. So in place of PC and DP, you can write both PC. So you can take out omega 1 plus, you can take out PC as common. So omega 1 plus omega 2 into PC. This is the velocity of sliding. So this is what, uh, this is the relative velocity between C and D. Now what is this? Omega 1 is the angular velocity of one gear. Omega 2 will be the angular velocity of second gear. And PC is the distance of contact point. This is the contact point distance of contact point from the pitch point. So when this contact point at, at uh, this contact point is at pitch point, when these two contact points are here, at that time this distance will be zero. So at that time sliding velocity will be zero. So sliding velocity will be zero at the pitch point and this will be maximum when this contact point, the distance of this contact point is farthest from the pitch point. So this occurs when these two teeth come into contact or when these two teeth uh, leave the contact between each other. In those two uh, positions, on those two positions, velocity of sliding will be maximum. Thank you for watching this video.